Welcome back to Read This Book. I'm Lisa Vondrasik from the Children's Literature Research Collections of the University of Minnesota. And back with us again to talk about communities that are brought together by books is... Jan Franson, and I am the service lead for researcher information and discovery systems at the University of Minnesota Libraries. What did you bring us? Well, this is a com something you might not think that someone like me, a landlocked girl from the Midwest, would really love, but it's the it's Master and Commander, which is the first in the Aubrey Maturin series of books by Patrick O'Brien. Uh, let's see, I, I read the first one years ago, probably looking at the book about the time the movie came uh. out with Russell Crowe. And I was enthralled with it, and I ended up reading all 20 of the books in the series wow. uh, over the course of time. And I'm a member of a Facebook group called the Aubrey Maturin Appreciation Society, which is shockingly active and has thousands of members. And what do you think draws these people together? Oh, gosh. I, I think really at the bottom of it is a love for the characters. There are certainly many people in the group who love to think about sailing and the Napoleonic Wars and, and battles and that sort of aspect of it and are really interested in the, the technical aspects of sailing and all of that. But I think those people and everyone else in the community really are interested in these characters and where they go and how they live their lives. Can you say a little bit about who these characters sure. are? The Aubrey Matron are the obviously the central two characters. Uh, Aubrey is Captain Jack Aubrey who is a captain in the British Navy. Uh, he, his, his dear friend is Stephen Maturin, who, and of course they meet in the first chapter of the book. Uh, Maturin is a, uh, a physician and becomes a surgeon aboard most of uh, Aubrey's sailing adventures. And he's also a naturalist, so he's always looking for interesting things to any new animals that haven't been cataloged yet and so on. Uh, and he's also a spy. So there's a little element of that going on. So as there's well. a little mystery. Yeah. There's a very strong sense of place and time. Mm -hmm. And you have these characters. Um, you brought a stack of books. Um, I was very interested in this lexicon. Yes. So the Patrick O'Brien does. It, it, I should say right off the bat, they're historical, but they're not like historically accurate. Uh -huh. and you couldn't do a timeline and have it make any sense or anything. They're wonderful stories about a particular place and time. But he is wonderful with the vocabulary, both of the, the sea and the sailors, the language that they use, and then just of the times. Um, and I, I don't know, I'll flip, flip open the book and read you a couple. Something that catches people a lot when they start reading these books is not really having an understanding of all the parts of a ship or all of mm -hmm. the language that they're using about sailing. And I contend that it's not that important that you mm -hmm. do. It's sort of like the... Um, uh, the language that doctors in a TV show right. are using it that you're not matter. really, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to know, say, what uh, close reefed means, well, it means that a topsail uh, with three or four reef bands, one or more which, of which could be taken in to reef the sail. When the final reef is taken in, the sail is said to be close reefed. Or a better one, perhaps, close to the wind. When the ship's bow is pointing as far as the, to the wind, into the wind as possible without luffing the sails. Luffing the sails, but I like course, that. But of course, you know, you can now look up luffing. Look up luffing. You know, so if you really want to know that stuff, you certainly can. I'm going to take this back. I'm going to take the book back because I don't want you to go without telling me about this gorgeous volume. Oh, this is a beautiful t uh, coffee table type book that mm -hmm. walks through um, basically the whole adventure, but has a lot of things about, for example, the world, well, the title of this, this chapter happens to be The World That Jack Knew. Uh, uh, and a little bit about what, what England would have been like at that time, what London would have been like, what working within the system of the Royal Navy would have been like. Uh, and then, of course, at sea as well. So there are pictures throughout of actual people, portraits, um, caricatures, and so on. So what we're looking at here is not only information about the titles that he wrote, but also archival materials that surround them. Yes, exactly. So as we look through these, mm -hmm. wow. So you can truly immerse yourself in this world. You certainly can, yes. Wow. Well, okay. thank you for bringing us these fabulous volumes because I have to say, now I am interested <laughs> and I don't think I was before. So um, I hope you come back again and talk about another community that revolves around a book. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Lisa Vondrasik, read this book. See you again.